Hello friends and welcome. I'm sure many of us parents, if not all of us, want our children to be happy. We give them good food to eat, to satisfy their hunger and nourish their bodies. We buy them clothes and shoes that they like to wear, be these uh, fanciful shoes with lights flashing away with every step that they take, or the uh, latest fashionable sports shoes they have been eyeing on. We give them extra tuition and enrichment classes in the belief that with better performances in the academic and co-curricular areas, they can go further in life, gain greater honour and prestige, earn more money, and therefore be more likely to find happiness. But is this really true? An op-ed written by two sociologists for the Straits Times in January 2023 does not agree with the idea that money can buy us happiness. They said that, quote, having more money doesn't automatically translate into greater life satisfaction, unquote. Instead, what does bring about happiness is good relationships. Good relationships with loved ones, such as spouse, family, and friends. Interestingly, this opinion is strongly corroborated by numerous other studies, including the longest running one on happiness conducted by a team at Harvard University. According to its project director, Dr. Robert Waldinger, quote, personal connection creates mental and emotional stimulation, while isolation is a mood buster, unquote. Why is this so? Well, let us examine this subject a little bit more. What is happiness in the first place? Happiness has been defined as an emotional state characterized by feelings of satisfaction, contentment, and fulfillment. In other words, it is a positive emotional state brought about when a need or desire is satisfied. What are these? At a basic physiological level, as uh, living beings, as uh, living animals, we have a desire for self-preservation. So we find fulfillment in things such as food, chocolates anyone, drink, and reproduction. However, at a slightly higher level, there's another level where we seek fulfillment. A desire for self-esteem, self-validation, right? So we seek validation, we seek greater recognition in the hope that through gaining greater honour, accumulating greater material assets, perhaps even power, we will be seen as persons worthy of respect and love. But here again, this sense of happiness is brought about through external factors, many of which are outside our control. Not just that, many of us who are more um, mature, a euphemism which basically means older, will have realised that the happiness brought about by these pursuits, be it wealth, honour, power or pleasure, is at best temporary and never seems to be enough to satisfy our deepest cravings, right? Can we remember the last time we had a big pay rise or a promotion? Or the last time we um, bought our dream car? How long did that great feeling last? All too often, once we have obtained something that we desire, the initial exhilaration dissipates soon after. And then we find ourselves seeking the next best thing to try to satisfy our hungry hearts. There is, however, another level of happiness which is not affected by external factors and which can be permanent. By this, I'm referring to joy. There's a definition of joy which I like and which I heard from one of uh, Father Mike Schmitz's talks. He says that joy is the abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. The abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. This joy is not affected by our having or not having our desires fulfilled by external factors. Instead, it is an internal sense of well-being that is stable, even and often despite negative external circumstances. Why is this so? We would remember that as human persons, we are both body and spirit, right? So not only do we find happiness in having our physiological and psychological needs met, we also find happiness, and more meaningfully so, when our spiritual needs are met. And what is that deepest need? Since we are made in the image and likeness of God, who is love, in fact, the eternal exchange of love in the Holy Trinity, we were made in love, made for love, made to love. 
We will meet by God, for God. We will meet for communion, which is why when we live out the image of God in and through our bodies as gifts, when we love and are loved as He loves in a communion of persons, we will experience joy. We will find meaning in our lives. And when we enter into intimate communion with Jesus, our bridegroom, our source and our goal, man, that will be the ultimate joy. Which is why St. Augustine was spot on when he famously said, quote, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Unquote. And it is precisely this state of being in communion with God that will bring our children true happiness, true joy. And isn't this the greatest gift that we want to give our children? With this, we are ready to launch into the next mini-series on faith and the virtues. Because it is the virtues that will help us love as God loves as we continue to practice them. And it is faith that will lead us to an ever deeper relationship with the ultimate source of our happiness, God himself. This mini-series will consist of short episodes like this one, as well as interviews with experts on various issues related to our topics of faith and virtues. And in addition, there will be a segment later in the series where we will explore some of the more difficult issues of our faith that we must sooner or later discuss with our children. I look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Till then, take care and may God bless you and your family always. Goodbye. If you found this video useful, I invite you to put a like to it, subscribe to our channel, and share it with others whom you think will benefit from it. God bless you always.